Hey friends, so it is cold outside today. Like it froze last night and I just don't feel like being out in the garden. So I'm gonna be in the kitchen instead. I'm gonna whip up a batch of buttermilk biscuits and I thought you might wanna come along for the ride. So I didn't realize it was gonna freeze last night and I left my cabbage seedlings out on the porch and I had a panic attack this morning because I was almost sure they were goners and they've been in the house all day and I think they're okay. It's pretty much a cabbage miracle. Now biscuits are one of those things I really appreciate because they don't require yeast. You can whip them up last minute if you feel like you need some sort of bread to go with your meal. And they're kind of old fashioned and cool. So they're definitely one of my standby recipes. Now this particular biscuit recipe is the one in my cookbook on page 168 to be exact. But if you don't have the cookbook, don't worry, because I'll put the whole recipe down in the show notes. All right, first things first, let's preheat the oven to 450 and grab a few simple, simple ingredients. So we're gonna need some butter, one stick or half a cup, flour, I'm using all purpose, you could use whole wheat if you'd like, a tablespoon of baking powder, it needs to be powder, not soda, and I always get the aluminum free stuff. Some fine sea salt, you know I keep mine in a bowl because I'm cool like that. A couple tablespoons of brown sugar or unrefined whole cane sugar. And last but not least, buttermilk. Now if you don't have buttermilk, don't worry because I actually don't have it either right now. And I'm not going to town anytime soon. So I'll show you a quick substitute you can make with regular old milk. Okay, so first things first, we need to talk about what a biscuit is. This is important, I promise. A biscuit is a pastry. It's like pie crust or a croissant, which means we want the fat and the flour in a pastry to not be perfectly blended and we want it to stay cold as long as possible. That's how we achieve that flaky consistency. So we want to make sure we're starting off with cold butter, cold buttermilk, AKA this is not a dough that you're gonna wanna knead to death. So we're gonna start off with three and a half cups of all purpose flour. Go ahead and add in a tablespoon of your baking powder, a teaspoon of fine sea salt, and two tablespoons of brown sugar or sugar sugar or what I use is unrefined whole cane sugar, whatever you got. We just want a little bit sweet. Okay, give it a good mix with your fork. Now comes the first important part. We're gonna add in our butter, and this is called cutting in the butter, okay? Now, I'm really excited because in about another week, we're gonna be all set up with our milking parlor and I won't be buying store-bought butter, hopefully ever again for the rest of my life. So a half a cup of butter, I want it cold, right? Cold, do not melt the butter. I like to use this little tool called a pastry cutter. Now, if you don't have one of these, you can totally just use a, a fork and a knife or two knives. The goal is we just want this to be a crumbly mixture not a cohesive uniform mixture. Okay, I'm trying to get the camera to focus in so you can see this. It's crumbly. You see there's a butter chunk right there? That's what we want. Now it's time to add the buttermilk. If you don't have that, you can do a quick little substitution trick. So this is whole milk from our cow, and I can turn this into buttermilk. For this recipe, I need one and a half cups of buttermilk. So I'm gonna pour about one and a third cups of milk into a measuring cup. Then I'm gonna add in a tablespoon or two of vinegar or lemon juice. And I'm gonna stir this until I see these little curdles starting to form on the spoon. Now all we're doing is adding acid into the milk which is going to react with the baking powder and give our biscuits the rise. All right, see the tiny little curdled milk bits on the sides of my container? That means we have acidified this milk properly. So now we're going to add in our butter milk all at once and give everything a mix until it comes together. Now I do not want to overwork this dough. I just want it to come together, but I don't want to sit here and knead it forever. Cold is good. All right, so it's about as much as I can mix together with a fork and now I'm just gonna get my hands in there briefly. I'm gonna dump my mess out onto the floured countertop and just very carefully bring it together. Like I'm not kneading, I'm just trying to press. Okay, press it together. That's it, like that's all I'm doing. <laughs> I am not doing more off camera, this is literally it. So I pressed my dough out to about three quarters of an inch thick, maybe a little thicker. So I've gotten a few messages from folks with a cookbook and they're like, my biscuits just aren't rising high enough. And usually when that happens, 
I find that they're, they're pressing this down a little bit too flat. So if you want really tall biscuits, then leave this dough a little bit taller. Make sense? I like to bake my biscuits on stoneware. I don't preheat it, I just put them right on. If all you have is a regular old cookie sheet though, that's totally fine. To cut these out, you're gonna use about a three inch cutter. If you have a biscuit cutter like this guy, if not, just use a drinking glass with some flour wiped on the edges so it doesn't stick. Gonna arrange these around here. Got a little bonus biscuit there. You can let the edges touch if you want softer edges or if you really want them to crisp up and brown, then separate them out like I did. And now I'm just gonna stick them in the oven 12 to 14 minutes until they're lightly browned. Okay, one thing to keep in mind, I cut mine really thick. So I only got about nine biscuits out of this recipe and they might take a little bit longer to bake. If you roll your dough out a little bit thinner, you should get between 12 and 14 finished biscuits and they might bake a little bit quicker, so keep an eye on them. So while that's baking, I wanna take you outside really quick and give you a sneak peek of the milking parlor. Now I'm not gonna show you everything because the grand reveal will be in next week's video and let's face it, it's not done yet anyway, but I wanted to give you a sneak peek because I'm pretty excited about it. So Christian has dug a giant hole outside the barn and working on some water lines to be inside the parlor. And there's a pile of dirt, that's exciting. And check it out. Quick peek, quick peek. I'm hoping it'll be done within the next couple of days. Well, it should be. And then I'll give you the official tour next week. But let's just say it has to get ugly before it can get pretty. Time's up, let's see what we got. Just so you know, there's always the pretty biscuits of the batch and the not so pretty biscuits, but thankfully they all taste the same. Also, I just thought you should know that there's something burnt at the bottom of my oven, which subsequently set off the smoke alarm while the biscuits were baking. I would like to say that is a rare occurrence, but that would be a lie. I love to serve these biscuits alongside soup or stews, or we eat them for breakfast in the morning with butter and jam. And they are definitely my go-to biscuit for homemade biscuits and gravy, which honestly, we eat for supper probably even more than we eat it for breakfast.